Welcome back to this next MetPy Monday, continuing our series on archived satellite data. Uh, last time we were looking at getting a plot from our visible satellite imagery that we saved from the class data server. And so I'm starting here from our previous notebook that we were using and we see our previous image. And here we were plotting the raw counts in our 10-bit format data. But the problem is maybe we don't want to use just raw counts for plotting up our, our map. Maybe we want to get something in effective uh, albedo or reflectance uh, so that we can make our image look a little better and have a little bit more meaning for us. So again, our netcdf file doesn't contain information about how we actually do this, and so we're going to need to look it up. And so we're going to have to go to our favorite uh, browser and, and go to our favorite search site here, uh, which I'm using Google. And so we're going to want to Google something specific called Go's Calibration. So go ahead and search Go's Calibration. And on Google, our first hit is, is what we want this information about Go's calibration from NOAA. So go ahead and click on that. And here we contain a lot of information. And we're specifically looking for information about how to understand the calibration of our visible channel. And so specifically, we're looking for this link right down here, learn about pre-launch calibration of the visible channel data. Let's go ahead and click on that link. So then we can see how we can take our raw counts in our 10-bit format and move it into first radiance and then moving from radiance to albedo. And so we see that it's a fairly simple equation. We're going to be using equation one here. R, our radiance, equals m times x, which is our 10-bit raw counts, plus b. So a simple linear equation here, mx plus b. So that will get us to our radiance values. But then ultimately to get to albedo, we're going to need to multiply by another value, k, to get to our effective albedo here. a equals k times r. So these are relatively simple equations, but the problem is what are the values of k, m, and b? This page also contains that information in tabular format. And so what we need to do is we need to scroll down and we know that we are using GOES 13 imager data. And so we want table five. Table five here contains our data for the visible channel. And since we don't know what detector it is, we're just gonna use the values for detector number one, for M, the slope, B, the intercept, and K, this parameter to convert from radiance to effective albedo. And so what we wanna do is we wanna bring these values into our Jupyter notebook. And so let's go ahead and copy this value for M from the table, note here it's this value times 10 to the negative 1. And so then we can here in our Jupyter Notebook in our cell, put m equals, we'll go ahead and paste our value, and then type e to the minus 1. That will give us our value 6.12 times 10 to the negative 1. We'll want to do the same thing for b. Go back to our website here, b minus 17.749. We're just going to copy and paste this value. And then again, one final time for k, copy and paste. Here, 1.89544. Okay, here we need to remember times 10 to the minus third. So when we paste this, e to the minus three will give us all of our values set up there. And so we're just setting up variable names within our Jupyter notebook to hold that in order to calculate our radiances. And so we're going to want to use our visible 10-bit data, but we know that there's not going to be data in this masked region, this place that is looking out at space, so we want to go ahead and mask our array. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type viz underscore masked equals, and then we're going to use our numpy masked array module again, np.ma. And now we're going to use masked underscore array. And we're going to feed it our viz underscore 10 bit data. But then we're also going to need to feed it a mask that it knows how to mask. So we want mask equals. And we're just going to use our latitude, lat.mask here. We'll give us the masked array from latitude to then mask our visible data in the same way. So we go ahead and 
Hit enter. We've masked our array pretty quickly there and we're ready to move on. And so now we want to actually do our calculation to get our radians and then our effective albedo. And so again, we just need to remind ourselves of the equation so we can go back to our website here. Scroll back up to the top. Our radiance equals m times x, which x here is our visible 10-bit data, plus b. And so we can do r equals m times, now it's x, which is our visible satellite data, which here we're going to want to use vis underscore masked, plus then b. And since we've set up our variable names to be exactly that same way, it makes it out to a pretty easy equation. Similarly, we want to do effective albedo. And there we need to recall our equation. So if we go back to our website, scroll on down a little bit, we have A equals K times R. And so when we go back to our Jupyter notebook, we know we have effective albedo equals then K times R. Just set up quite readily right there. And so we can go ahead and run that. It'll do our calculations for us runs pretty quickly. And now we can go ahead and see that our albedo, which we know should be between zero and one, because that's how albedo works, that when we go ahead and plot the max, sure enough, it is between zero and one, and our max effective albedo is 0.87 and so on. And so let's go ahead and plot this data up. So what we need to do is just copy these three lines from our previous image to go ahead and plot now our effective albedo, we need to make one change here instead of viz 10 bit, let's go ahead and change that to effective underscore albedo, and we'll go ahead and run that. Again, it takes just a, just a minute here to go ahead and run that plot. And what you're probably noticing is that there's really not a whole lot of change here between uh, our two plots. And that's because matplotlib in the background is doing its do due diligence to give us a nice plot based on whatever we're feeding it. So now our gray values are between 0 and 1, so it plots accordingly, as opposed to our 0 to 1023 with our viz underscore 10 bit. But it turns out we can do one small little thing to make this just a little bit better. Because we can kind of see that this image is still kind of dark. We can sort of see the outline of the land versus the water for our visible satellite imagery, but it's not really good. And so what we can do is we can add a gamma correction. Gamma correction is a way to, uh, a technique to alter our image just a little bit uh, to bring out different qualities uh, within our range. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a gamma correction, uh, essentially of a gamma 2, uh, which is basically just taking the square root of our data that is between 0 and 1. And so we're going to do, we're going to create a new variable here, effective underscore albedo underscore gamma underscore correction equals and we're going to use the numpy module again np.sqrt so we're going to take the square root of our effective underscore albedo and we're going to use our tab completion there to help us and so by doing that we can go ahead and run that oh we get a warning but that's not going to be uh, uh, an issue for us and so now we have our effective albedo square rooted, so we have our, this gamma correction. And let's go ahead and plot this up again. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste our image one more time, except now we want to change our effective albedo to be our gamma corrected one. So we're going to add the underscore, and we're going to hit tab to auto complete the rest of it. And so again, we're going to continue using our grays. We'll go ahead and run that image. And sure enough, now, if we look at our two different images, we see we've, we've got a, a brighter image, an image where we can maybe see some of the details a little bit better in our cloud structures, and especially between our land and the clouds. And so this ultimately creates a slightly nicer image. We can also see that our masked region appears white in this image. But there's still some limits to this, right? It still seems kind of elongated, our image. And we don't seem to have proper orientation, nor do we have lines here for our uh, geopolitical or coastline references. And so what we're going to do in the next MedPy Monday is look at how we can alter this image just a little bit by using some other features of, of Cartapi, 
uh, to plot lines on our map to give us some geospatial references. That concludes this MetPy Monday. Thanks for listening.